What is up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today we are ranking the albums of Dark Tranquility. And hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. All right, Dark Tranquility, one of my favorite bands of all time, not just in melodic death metal, but just in general, and they are fantastic. So I am ready to just jump right into this thing and update my old list. So let's start at the beginning here with Skydancer in 1993. A little bit of trivia for people who don't know, this is the only album to feature Anders Frieden, who would later join In Flames, <laughs> on vocals, and it's it's an odd one. It is an oddball of their discography, definitely a little bit weird. They hadn't fully formed their sound yet, I would say, so it's easy for me to say that this is my least favorite album. I'm willing to bet there those defenders out there for this one, and uh, it has its own merits. Let it be known, too, that whenever I put something at a D, that doesn't mean I would give it a D grade if I reviewed it on its own, but just within the context to keep things a little bit separated and keep things interesting, I'm going to put it at D. All right, but then let's move into what I consider to be sort of the real Dark Tranquility debut in a landmark album, The Gallery, in 1995. I absolutely adore this album. It's got that classic, like, early Gothenburg sound to it. Lots of great tracks, my personal favorites. The title track is just so, like, lush with the acoustic and the big, powerful melodies that it brings. The raw vocals, the atmosphere. It's just, it's stunning. It really is. It's it's a masterwork, especially considering... I like the female vocals on this one, too, which, uh, as I recall, this is the only one that has those. Um, yeah, just brooding, and... It, it, there wasn't a lot of music like this at the time, too, so it's kind of cool that, you know, alongside their other, like, sort of big four melodic death metal brethren, they put out this amazing record. So, yeah, the one brooding warning midway through infinity those are kind of my favorite three tracks on this one drums sound great but really the whole album is spectacular the only reason i don't put it at s tier is because there are other albums i like even better and again i want to keep things a little bit more separated out so i'm going to put it at a tier but it's it's like right on the verge of <laughs> being S tier. And if I were to, again, give this a standalone grade just as an album, it would definitely get an A+. Let's move on to The Mind's Eye in 1997. This one is, you know, it's a solid follow-up, but it has, uh, you know, <laughs> after the power of that one, it's, uh, it's hard to to sort of come second after that. S definitely some solid tracks on here. I really like uh, the second track here, Zoded Jekyll Light. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Great riff on that one. Dan, 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 dan. Just those classic alternated palm mutes with the picking that we've come to associate with the genre. Hedon is sort of a classic too. I think they performed this live when I saw them come through here. Still got that atmosphere and that melody. And there's other good ones too. The opening track, Dream Lord Degenerate. It's pretty solid too. Disillusion Factor Red. Lots of, lots of good moments on here. I would say it's not as consistent. It doesn't have the same legacy. There does feel like there's kind of some filler, more or less. No songs that are like terrible. But uh, at 54 minutes, it starts to feel a little bit bloated to me. I'm going to go ahead and put this one at B tier, because still really solid, above average, but not as strong as the debut, if you ask me. Then we've got Projector in 1999, and I feel like this is an album that kind of gets dumped on a lot. <laughs> but there, And I get why, because um, this one's bloated too, and if the last one was inconsistent, my god, this one's very inconsistent. But there are some absolute classics on here. Um, first of all, I love the... The opening track with all the piano, it's just very lush. Again, more atmosphere. This is a very melodic album. More so than than anything else, I'd, I'd argue, in many ways. Um, but Therein is a classic. 
I did see them perform this live and I almost cried. <laughs> like literally, I, I turned into a little baby and sang along the entire way. They got this great powerful opening riff. And then the big sing-along chorus, man. Oh, it, get, it gets me right in the feels every time. Oh, I want to sing along right now, but I'll spare you. Um, Undo Control is a really great track, too. Just listen to that. The production's improving at this point, too. Oh, I was... I spoke too soon. That's correct. This one has female vocals on it, too. I kind of wish they'd do that more. It adds to the already impressive dynamics. Exposure, the final track, is really solid, too. Just a banger here, man. Good stuff. Now, in between... There's definitely, again, some filler here. It's definitely inconsistent. But every time I listen to it, I kind of enjoy it more. So I've been putting it at C tier, but it's like C plus B minus. I could almost say I sort of enjoy listening to it a little bit more um, than The Mind's Eye. So that might be a, I don't know, That's a, is that a controversial opinion? I almost want to bump, bump it up to B tier. I've been putting it at C tier. I'll, I'll think about it. Let's continue on to... Haven, which is another album I really enjoy. I And I've seen some people sort of deride this one, too, which was surprising to me. Um, I think some people consider this to be them sort of selling out a little bit or getting a little bit too mainstream. I'm, I don't really understand the argument. I think it's a stellar album that's very consistent, that not only has the hits like The Wonders at Your Feet, which is an amazing opener once again. They've got a lot of great opening tracks for their albums. Oh, just take a second to take that in. <laughs> Not built to last. Great one to follow that up to. Awesome synth work on here. The same. Like, a lot of personal favorites on here. Ooh, that, like, kind of folky, in flames -y riff on that one, too. And then the big, powerful chorus. Fabric. It's cool, deeper cuts. Rundown, or just a rager. Ah, can't, how can? And then in between all those, all the other tracks are still really impressive too. So I, I think that this is one of their top tier albums. I'm gonna go ahead and put it at A tier. Again, I have ones that I enjoy even more than that though. So I'm still leaving S tier for those. And I think we're about to maybe jump into some here because we are moving on to damage done in 2002 and holy crap this is a masterpiece this is an absolute masterpiece it's weird because like i don't see this cover come up or this album just come up in conversation as much for whatever reason but as you can see here <laughs> like i love this album every track is a single basically you got the final resistance opening things up some of the best riffs ever their production is super solid at this point i will say i'm a little biased because this was the first album i got from them and holy cow did i i wear it out i had a cdr from my friend that he burned for me it's probably unlistenable at this point but oh my gosh this this album is just brings all the feels monochromatic stains is an absolute classic play that one live a lot the treason wall that drum intro. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, title track, Cathode Ray Sunshine. They even had some music videos on this one that are kind of fun. There there was at least one that was in sort of like a German expressionist style. I can't remember. I think it was for Monochromatic Stains. Um, but yeah, this whole album, I could go on and on with it. But the songwriting is so perfect, is so consistent. And that is why it is, to this day... Probably my favorite Dark Tranquility album. It definitely needs to be at S tier. If you have not heard this album, you need to go do that right now. <laughs> but let's move to Character in 2005, which is also very strong. In fact, I almost consider this to be sort of a Damage Done Part 2. Very similar vibe, similar production. Almost feels like it was recorded like at the same time but not with feeling like B-sides, like just as strong songs. Another great album opener with the new build. 
I feel like this album almost gets like faster in places too. Like these are some of like this era of infl of the flames of dark tranquility is my favorite just because the riffs are just so impressive. So <laughs> yeah, I, it's easy for me to get distracted here. Out of nothing. Oh, that bass. Listen to that jangle of that bass. It's so good. Uh, the endless feeds really good. This one has a more kind of like atmospheric intro, bit of a head bobber. Mind matters. Am I one? Sense is tied. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling y'all, I could just stop the recording now and listen to this one. But yeah, really great stuff. I I'd say it comes a little bit second to Damage Done, just by like an inch or a millimeter even. But another S tier album, and then continuing right on to Fiction in 2007, and this is kind of like the trilogy. This is the trilogy of greatness for me. Whenever I recommend In Flames albums, it's going to be one of these three. Uh, interestingly, when this album came out, I did not like it at all because it has... Uh, those last two albums actually have no clean singing. And this one has quite a bit. And so that kind of turned me off initially, having not really fully dug into their full discography at this point. Ugh, but man, no, nothing to know when I enjoyed, obviously, because it sounds like something that could have been on those last two albums. But then you've got, you know, some more somber, almost doomier tracks with uh, the clean singing in it. And it just, oh man, that riff. Oh God, every time it's like I forget and then I'm reminded of these amazing moments. And then I kick myself too, because I'm like, how could I not enjoy this album the first time I heard it? Because uh, all these tracks are bangers. And honestly, there's like, by ratio, there's not that much clean singing. But that said, like, Michael's a great clean singer, too, and I've come to love his sung vocals on these, too. Ah, oh, man, these riffs. They're just, like, endless. And the synth work is impeccable. Yeah, we got Misery's Crown, which I saw them play live, and you better believe I screamed along to the... Here's the singing on it, too. Which... Yeah, I just wasn't ready for it at the time, I guess. Don't bring it! <laughs> we were all screaming along to that part, man. We went fucking ape shit. Focus shift is really good, too. I don't know what was wrong with me, because this is another S-tier album. Those are my top three. Easily, no question. Those are locked. Um, a lot of these other ones can kind of, like, shift around depending on the day, but those three are always at the tippy top but let's go on to we are the void in 2010 and they lose me a little bit on this one i feel like the production isn't as strong the songwriting isn't as strong as you can see i've gone from harding almost every song to just a few back to kind of like how it was before still some great songs on here so not a bad album i, I say i've seen some people just like tear this album to shreds but great opener, as always, with great riffs on Shadow and Our Blood. Dream Oblivion's great. Super atmospheric on that opening. Almost like Dimu Borgir kind of style. <laughs> for Silent Language, I like a lot. For more melodic cuts. More great synth. I Am The Void. God, the drum sound great there. But yeah, going back to being a little bit more inconsistent, a little bit more filler on these where I'm just not as interested. It's not just for whatever reason, it's just not as re-listenable to me. So I'm going to go ahead and I had been putting that at B tier, but I almost want to like drop it down a little bit. I guess I'll leave it at B tier for now because it is it's still pretty solid. I guess it's a little bit above average, but um, honestly, but though, for sake of argument, I like, I think, the, like, sort of singles, if you will, from uh, Projector a little bit more than the ones on We Are The Void. So do with that what you will. Like I said, some of these are not fully set in stone, even after all these years of listening, because, like I said, I've been listening to these for a long time. Let's move on to Construct in 2013. And this was another one where I was kind of like, huh. <laughs> Because huh, it is a very different sounding album and that has a lot to do with the shift in 
guitarist and guitar work subsequently. So it's just... It's a less, like, riffy album. It's much more focused on the synth and the atmosphere. Now, that's not to say there aren't riffs, but they're just, like, not as front and center. But I do like the science of noise that's grown on me. If I recall, this was the lead single. It was at least one of the singles. But good stuff on there. What Only You Know, too, is a solid one. More melodic. And, and... Don't get me wrong, it's it's beautiful. Like, a lot of this, and the atmosphere is definitely really top-notch. But again, it's just like, it's a little floaty. It almost reminds me more of like an Insomnium album, which I love Insomnium too, but I, I like that really like hard-hitting riff-driven stuff, and this album is just, if that's what you want, that's not what you're going to get. But there's plenty of good stuff on here that's enjoyable. It's just, still even after all these years, even though it's grown on me, I enjoy it more than I used to. It's one of the ones that I go back to the least for all of those reasons. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one at C tier, even a little bit behind Projector. All right, then we have a Toma in 2016, and this was a big comeback. I adore this album. I have a shirt from, this was the touring cycle I saw them on. And um, oh, that's a moment. Uh, <laughs> and they were, oh, they were so good. And this album, this album is just incredible. Like, it's almost as strong, I would say, as the trilogy. But they brought back a lot of the guitar work I liked without losing any of the atmosphere that they had built up on the last album. Another great intro with Encircled. Atoma, the title track. Great synth lines on this one. Just lots of memorable moments coming back again that I felt were sort of missing on the previous one. I like Neutrality a lot. Forward rom Momentum is a solid one, too. The Pitiless is perhaps my personal favorite on the whole album. Because again, you're bringing back those sort of like damage done sounding moments on that one. But also these big, expansive, melodic moments. It's, it's a nice balance between the two styles, kind of. Clearing Sky is great, too, with that piano intro. Another kind of a tearjerker in certain spots, I would say. But yeah, very, very strong album. Not quite S-tier, but uh, it's, it's on A-tier. In fact, I would put it on the front end of A-tier. In fact, I'd say I enjoyed a little bit more than the gallery, which might be a controversial opinion, but... There you have it. And then finally, the latest edition that was not on my previous version of this list is Moment in 2020 that I accidentally clicked on just a moment ago. No pun intended, but I'm... Uh, like this one? Um, it's funny because I hearted more tracks on this one, but I don't like it nearly as much as Atoma. Maybe I got a little click happy with some of these and adding them to the playlist. It took a while for some of these tracks to grow. When the singles were coming out, I was just not into it at all. Phantom Days kind of bored me. It's grown on me a lot with the heavier moments. I do feel like the production is not as strong. It feels a little bit flat to me. You can also check out, I have a full album review. Maybe I'll link it right there so you can check out my extended thoughts on this one. I do like Transient. It's got some good stuff on there. Identical to None was another single that when it came out, I did not like it at all, but uh, over time, it's grown on me. But a lot of these just feel like not as good imitations of their previous work to me. That chorus does get pretty cashy, though. Dark Unbroken is solid for a more somber, melodic track. This was actually the single that kind of turned me around a little bit, oddly enough, because it's not riff driven. It's, it's a slow ballad. Um, but I like some of the deeper cuts more. I like Ego Deception a lot. There's those riffs that I'm looking for. Like, this is bringing uh, kind of this darkness to it, too. But a good, a good, some good clean singing on here, too. A Drawn Out Exit, too. This one I always describe as, like, just sounding like a storm coming. And I think there's even some, like, lightning and, like, thunder in there. I guess you can't hear lightning. <laughs> so thunder, if I recall. Um, Empire's Lost the Time, solid one too. I think those big, powerful, triumphant riffs. So yeah, Moment, it's it's solid. Um, 
not great when it came out i gave it i think i gave it a b minus in my grade again you can check out my full album review for that but i'm gonna put it at the very end of b tier i'd argue i like we are the void i, I like a uh, moment a little bit better than we are the void <sighs> the mind's eye not sure like again it's harder with the lower tiers i would say these top six are like pretty solid like i feel pretty good about how those lined up and have for you know the decades of listening <laughs> at this point but um these ones are a little bit tougher to kind of rank because i could even see again pulling up projector a little bit i could see we are the void dropping down a little bit but i think more or less these are my rankings of dark tranquility and as always if you want to go for the full ranking without the tears it's just right to left bottom to top but let me know down in the comments what is your favorite dark tranquility album where do we agree where do we disagree and don't go anywhere because i got plenty more videos coming right after this one i have a whole playlist at this point of these tier lists but that'll do it for now flight of icarus signing off i will see you in the trenches